break down the walls that divide us. Not just for your own sake, but for friendship's sake, and for those Americans in need who seek but cannot find friendship. I ask, let me be your friend. If this is the night, Elizabeth. Well, there it is, ladies. To dream. You want me to pinch you, Mr. President? No. <laughs> I'm wide awake. Maybe later. I've got a lot of promises to keep. And you will, Mr. President. Or you'll have to answer to the First Lady and 300 million new friends. <laughs> How is going on? What? Driver, where are you taking us? We have an emergency situation, Mr. President. Traveler arriving at Foxhole. Mr. President, my name is Tarkman. I served as President Burns National Security. I know who you are. I want to know what this is all about right now. Sir, we have an emergency situation. Not much time. What emergency? If you and the First Lady would come with me, please. Check the perimeter. Right now, sir. Mr. President, approximately an hour ago, NORAD spotted a bright object headed toward the Earth from the outer solar system. They've estimated its speed at roughly half the speed of light. What is it? A comet? A meteor? And what is this place? We don't know what the object is yet, sir. Please. We're taking you to the emergency command bunker. It's the only one deep enough in D.C. to provide you with some protection. Protection? Yes, ma'am. Anything that big moving that fast should wipe out most of the life on the planet in one shot. How long? It's about 100 million miles away. That gives us roughly 30 minutes. 30 minutes? My God, man, to do what? I wouldn't know, sir. That's up to you. There is nothing wrong with your television. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. We are now controlling the transmission. We control the horizontal and the vertical. We can deluge you with a thousand channels or expand one single image to crystal clarity and beyond. We can shape your vision to anything our imagination can conceive. For the next hour, we will control all that you see and hear. You are about to experience the awe and mystery which reaches from the deepest inner mind to the outer limits. Is man the center of the universe, made in the image of his God? Or is mankind merely the temporary occupant of an insignificant world, about to be extinguished? How far down are we going? Hopefully far enough, sir. Several hundred feet. We were caught between administrations. None of your cabinet have been sworn in yet, so the only people we have available are myself, Members of the transition team, sir. I understand. We've only had about an hour to... An hour? 
It took almost that long to establish the object as a threat, sir, because of For the God's speed. For God's sake, what could be more of a threat? But we are doing the best we can with the time we've got, sir. We've managed to get President Burns Jr. science advisor, Janet Brevson, the commander of the military space program, General Covington. He's on his way. And those are two people we want. Unfortunately, the former sec def and sec state are vacationing in Hawaii. Sir, they would be the secretaries of defense. And state. Don't patronize me, Mr. Tarkin. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. As you were. This was made to fight a nuclear war. This bunker goes back to Eisenhower. It's been updated over the years. That's it there, on the screen. The object? Yes, sir. How much time? 17 minutes. What about Kyle? He's on a ship in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. What's gonna happen to it? Sweetheart, please. With all due respect, it's very important the president be fully briefed. If you take a seat, please. Can anybody tell me what it is yet? We know it's not a comet. We've also ruled out asteroid and meteor. Janet Brevson, sir. Professor James couldn't be reached, so I'm afraid you're stuck with me. You're sure it's not a comet? Too fast. I can't think of any natural object capable of reaching that speed. Miss Brevson, I'd rather know what it is than what it isn't. We are still gathering data from all around the world, sir. Do you at least know where it's going to hit? You don't know that either? No. Somewhere in the Eastern Hemisphere. There's just too many variables, sir. One-tenth of one percent error could move ground zero from Japan to Europe. But not the United States. No, sir, but that won't matter. I'd say it does. What he means, sir, is there's no place on Earth that will escape the shock of the impact. We're talking about 9.5 earthquakes. The dust cloud itself. The shroud of dust and debris will block out sunlight for years. Most of those who survive the impact will freeze in the dark. Those who manage to find shelter from the cold will starve. several months worth of stores in the bunker. That's some comfort, Mr. Tarkman. Hey, huh? Mr. President, sir. General Covington. CNC Space Comm, sir. Since your defense secretary is not yet in place, I will have to report directly to you. We have to secure the facility, Mr. President. I have just spoken with NORAD and SAC, and they concur that you should order our conventional forces to DEFCON 3. We're not at war. I understand that, sir. But we need to get our communications... General, do we have anything that can knock the object out before it hits, like the Patriot missiles during the Gulf War? Mr. President, the object's kinetic energy is... Stop! From now on, when I ask a question, I want to hear plain English back. Is that clear? To everybody. I don't have time to wait for the translation. Now, can you or can you not shoot it down? No. It's too big, too fast, sir. What can we do? I need you to authorize the DEFCON change, Mr. President. How is increasing our military readiness appropriate? With respect, sir, maximizing survival after impact will depend on communication we're sitting on a trillion dollar system that was designed to work during a nuclear war but it's got to be up and running before impact that means going from defense condition five to three now then do it how much time three minutes to impact sir 
from. Have the American people been warned? No, sir, but given the amount of time we have left... Make time. The people at least deserve to know what hit them. Yes, sir, but it'll only cause panic in the streets. Just do it. Yes, sir. Pass me in. This is General Covington. We have a go for DEFCON 3. General, sir, we've got a hotline message from the Russian president. Go ahead and read it. I believe it's addressed to me. <clears throat> Authenticator, Charlie, Tango Alpha, President Halsey. I'd hoped our first correspondence would be in congratulations of your great political victory. Instead, I fear these words may be our last. We can only pray that God placed the moon among the stars in the firmament for this very day. President Yuri Karpov. What are you talking about? The moon? I would know, sir. I would. The Russians got their data sooner because they can confirm it optically. Our mass estimates were way, way off. It changed course when it swung by Saturn. This thing is incredibly heavy, English, Miss Brepson. We are now estimating a 90% probability that it's going to hit the moon. announcement about the end of the world on hold. 20 seconds to lunar impact. I'm scared, Charles. 10 seconds to impact. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Impact! Well, uh, do all new presidents get to go through this? Or is this just a special occasion? <laughs> If anybody has a cigar... Hold on. Hold on a second. Two of our satellites have detected a heat signature coming from space. What? It... Confidence is high that the object that hit the moon originated from an approaching spacecraft. This isn't over. This is not over. This is a National News Network update with Rosalind Ashcroft. From the president failing to show up at his own inaugural ball to the spectacular and mysterious explosion on the far side of the moon, it's been a most unusual inauguration day, wouldn't you say, Sam? That's quite an understatement. It appears that the Earth has just survived what might be termed a near miss by a comet or asteroid. And yet there's been no official comments by the new administration. Well, they'll be trying to avoid it. I want to make a statement before the media gets ahead of us. <laughs> Mr. President, all this speculation could cause a panic if they beat us to the punch. ...from an unnamed Russian source. Looks like they already have. So, is this second point of light that's been discovered? The Russians have sold the pictures to the highest bidder. How much time? Well, they're slamming on the brakes pretty hard. Less than 24 hours before they're on top of us? Yeah, decelerating at something like 75 Gs. It's incredible. And they still haven't made any attempt to communicate? None, sir. I want to go back to the White House and make a speech from the Oval Office. No, sir. You should stay right here. The American people cannot think I'm hiding out on the eve of first encounter. Anything you broadcast to the American people will be picked up by the aliens just a few minutes later, compromising your exact location. After that demonstration, I think we can assume wait, that... Wait a minute. Well, what demonstration? If dropping that object on the moon wasn't a demonstration of power and superiority, I don't know what is. But surely that's the point. You don't know. You can't assume they're hostile, can you? I mean, it didn't strike the Earth. Mr. President, the far side of the moon is probably still molten rock. 
We estimate it's been knocked at least two to four degrees out of orbit. That means the tides will be severely affected. Who knows what will happen to the global climate? The moon could still smash into the Earth for all we know. Hell, maybe they even missed the first time. No, no, no. I've spoken to NASA and JPL. We're feeding them real-time telemetry now. The object's velocity was a factor of the alien ship's velocity. Perhaps in... In English, sir, they are slowing down. Maybe they just let the object go, like like the spent solid rocket motors on the shuttle. We're still talking guesses here. Educated guesses, sir. As the First Lady pointed out, if the aliens wanted to kill us, they could have. They did not miss. What about the timing of the attack, the transition between administrations? Oh, Please. come on. You're assuming aliens, who could obviously crush us like ants, have carefully planned their foot stomping for a time the ants aren't ready. Mr. President, that is absurd. No, I agree with the General. Oh, this is a damn testosterone festival. Oh, wait a minute, Janet. These aliens have come a long way, light years. They could have communicated with us at any point en route. They chose to announce their arrival by showing us how easily they could destroy us. Now you're guessing. No, I don't think so. The coincidence is too much. An experienced incoming president known to be a dove, short on foreign policy. Mr. Tarkman, this is no time to play politics. Sit down. It's time I spoke to the American people. And the aliens. True, but for the moment, the message is one and the same. General, is this facility equipped to broadcast an announcement? Technically, yes. I assume you don't object to my making a statement from a pardoned bunker? No. Now, General, is there anything else we need to discuss? Intelligence, sir. We need to gather everything we can on these aliens. How? All we have between us and them is a ring of spy satellites in geosynchronous orbit. I want to use a deep radar to get an idea of what's inside those ships. The Hubble's being aligned now. Let's see if we can get that on the feed. Yes, General Covington here. Thank you. My people can now identify six distinct plumes from as many spacecraft. Armada. Yes, sir. What's the status on the shuttle? We got lucky. The newest in the fleet, Midway, is already on the pad. Ten hours. Good. Space Command has a top-secret anti-satellite weapon designed to fit inside the shuttle's payload bay. I've already ordered it flown there. General, this is a conventional weapon. No, sir. I wasn't aware that we had such a nuclear weapon in our arsenal. No, sir. As I said, it's top secret. We've not yet had the opportunity to brief you. Such a weapon is in flagrant violation of international treaty. Yes, sir, it is. It's also the only chance in hell we'll get to shoot back if it comes to that. But won't sending a weapon into space send the aliens the wrong signal? Please. Ma'am. They blow up the moon and you are worried about us sending the wrong signal. Mr. Tarkman. Let the president do his job. Mr. Tarkman. Sir, with respect, President Burns would never... President let Burns is no longer president. I am. And if you can't accept that fact, I if can. you cannot, you're welcome to step back out through that door right now. Right now. My wife and child are somewhere on the other side of that door, sir. I'd consider it a favor. Realize I am not the man you would have chosen for this job. Need I confess, you're not exactly who I had in mind either. But until there is a resolution to this, I am asking for your friendship, your help. General? Sir. Actually, sir, I like the whole friendship thing. I almost voted for you. Well, 
That's almost flattering, Miss Brevson. General, we will not install the nuclear missile aboard the shuttle until we've properly determined the alien's intentions. That will jeopardize the launch, sir. That is my decision. Very well, sir. You'll accept my apology, Mrs. Halsey. My reputation for speaking my mind precedes me, Mr. Tartman. Oh, still, I... Our son is somewhere on the other side of that door, too. I know how you feel. Nora has an urgent message. We'd like to conference her. Who's standing by? Mr. President, General Morehouse, Deputy C&C. Must be a hell of a first day on the job, sir. You're a master of understatement, General. Sir, we have detected what appears to be a laser beam directed at one of our primary commsats. The source seems to be the alien armada. Now, the satellite's still working, but it's heating up pretty fast. Are you saying one of our satellites is under attack? Yes, sir. And if it keeps heating up at this rate, our conversation's going to be cut pretty short. I estimate we have a pro... Uh, okay. Sir, I think the alien's intentions are becoming pretty damn clear. All right. Load the damn nuclear missile aboard the shuttle. Very good, sir. Because we have the option doesn't mean we have to use it. Not without your order, Mr. President. So, my fellow Americans, I have faith in both God and in you, the American people, that we will shine and rise to this wondrous, momentous occasion. First contact with another world. I will speak to you again when we've established communications. Until then, have faith, have hope, and God bless. We're clear. Thanks. Will the aliens be able to pick that up? We're boosting the signal with radio telescopes, but I just don't see how they could penetrate the arc of interference generated by their engines. If they wanted to talk, they wouldn't be taking out our communication satellites. But that's what I don't understand. Sound military doctrine. First make the enemy deaf and blind. Yeah, but it only makes communication inconvenient. What's the point? Hang on, we just got an all right back. Roger that. Come in. We've established a land link, Mr. President. There shouldn't be any more interruptions. How many satellites have been knocked out? Just the uh, one communication set. You should also know, sir, that the Russians have placed their strategic rocket forces on their highest alert. One of our listening posts pick up the chatter. Is this in response to our going to uh, DEFCON 3, General? No, sir. Our alert was strictly conventional. The Russian strategic missile force... Is a nuclear deterrent. So why? Can their land-based ICBMs reach space? No, sir. No more than ours can. Keep me informed, General. Yes, sir. I thought they were destroying all of their weapons. I thought the treaty it's was... It's a show of force. For whose benefit? The aliens. The Russians are sending the signal. They are not willing to give up their particular piece of real estate without a fight. They still have the teeth for it, trust me. Or they're trying to guarantee themselves a seat at the bargaining table. <sighs> Airman. Sir. Take this down for me, please. President Karpov, uh, you have brought your strategic nuclear forces to a state of readiness. Uh, since these weapons are incapable of reaching space, what are your intentions? Morehouse here. Send that. Sir. Another satellite's under attack, sir. Is there anything we can do? Well, I suppose we could shut it down and play dead, but uh, this one's not heating up nearly as fast, though. Sir, I have a Dr. Norris at NASA who insists on speaking with you about what the alien laser means. Put him on, then. We all want to know. Mr. President, the laser is not a weapon. The frequency's all wrong. It's a message laser. They're, they're trying to communicate. The, the first laser was too powerful, and so they've reduced the intensity, and that's when I realized that the beam was digitally modulated on our own video encryption codec. Uh, could you say that again, sir, in, in plain English? Uh, they're, they're trying to talk to us with light. So what does the message say? 
I have no idea. But I can show it to you. You're gonna die when you see this. I sincerely hope not. being left out. It doesn't matter. They're trying to communicate. They may have said surrender or die for all we know. We need to find out what the message means. In English, yes, sir. We're working on it. I want a reply as soon as possible. We're working on that too, sir. And I think we should share the alien's message with the rest of the international community. May I ask why? I don't think it was intended for just me, Mr. Tarkman. They chose an American satellite by which to communicate. I say that means they want to deal with our president. They're assuming he speaks for the whole planet. That's one of the most egocentric, jingoistic comments I've ever heard. Why? They're the ones who made it impossible for the rest of the world to pick up the messages except for us. <clears throat> Mr. President, we just received another hotline message from the Russian president. Shall I read it, sir? President Halsey? The Russian parliament has concluded that these aliens are as belligerent as they are powerful. It has therefore been determined that any incursion into our airspace will be met with maximum force. I ask that the great American people join in our stand with the same resolve. May God protect us all. President Yuri Karpov. You know what that gives us? Carte Blanche to put our nuclear forces on alert, DEFCON 2. No. Keep your options open, sir. That would remove options. The Russians will see it as a sign of solidarity, sir. We will not, I repeat, not be putting our nuclear forces on high alert. The aliens would never Last know... Last night, you virtually suggested that the aliens knew what I'd had for breakfast. No, sir, I did not... Now you're convinced we can ready 5,000 warheads around the world without them noticing. Which is it, General? Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to release the alien's message for the entire world to see. You are going to arrange for me to broadcast a reply, and I'm going to speak to them. Do you have a problem with any of that, General? No, sir. got elected with the words, let me be your friend, and then promptly disappears the moment there's a crisis. Now, what is President Halsey doing about this alien threat? That is what we in the Congress want to know, and that is what the American people want to know. But what are you doing about the situation, Congressman? Well, let me tell you something. I'm about to reply to the alien's message without the faintest idea what I'm replying to. Isn't there almost as much meaning in the gesture of communicating as in the words themselves? That's a good thought. In the midst of this bad dream. You want me to pinch you? Oh, yes. Sir, I thought you might like a cup of coffee. Excuse me. Mr. Tartman, this is like cashless. Network update. Rosalind Ashes. The U.S. State Department. Sir, we think we may have. Hang on, I want to watch this. Every major news agency of what appears to be a message recently sent by the aliens to U.S. authorities. I think. Yes, I think we have that for you now. 
I better get ready. Sir, we should have telemetry from the deep radar satellite now. It's in position to scan the alien ships. Well, the main thing is, will they hear me? We think so. We're going to bounce the signal off a satellite as it passes by. As long as it works. Mr. President, NASA has a theory as to what the object was that struck the moon. They don't think it's a weapon at all, sir. They think it's something wonderful. And what's that? A quantum singularity. Uh-huh. It's a, a mini black hole. What does that do for us? Well, it does nothing for us, sir, but it would have provided an inexhaustible power supply for the alien's trip here. How is that wonderful? Because it means it wasn't a show of force. It might even be a gift so that we can travel to the stars someday. Ms. Brevson, Ms. Brevson. No, we don't know. We're guessing. We shouldn't jump to conclusions. I agree we shouldn't jump to conclusions one way or the other. Ready when you are, sir. Friends, welcome. I'm President Charles Halsey, and I speak on behalf of the American people. We are a world of many nations. Many of our leaders, including myself, are wary of your arrival. We do not yet understand the message you have sent us. Though we welcome you to our world, we ask that you remain in orbit until we have established diplomatic relations. I want to make this clear. Any incursion into our atmosphere may be met with force. We can only hope and pray that this day will be celebrated as the day our two worlds, divided by a sea of stars, became friends. Very nice, sir. Should have been a speechwriter. Oh, there just may be a job for you here after all, Tarkman. It's going out to the media services simultaneously. The aliens should pick up the signal in a few seconds. You always sweat when you're on camera. You don't approve. Of drawing a line in the sand? I think you know me better than that. I had to do it, Elizabeth. What happens if they cross it? They won't. What if they do? Then they would have anyway. Mr. President. They should uh, be entering orbit about now. We'll know in a few minutes or so if that's where they intend to stay. General, if this were an invasion force, what would you expect the next move to be? Send a scout to test our defenses. Locate command and control, cut it off. Then? Kill it. Sir? Assuming the glass is half full for just a second, we should consider plans for a summit meeting between yourself and the alien representative. We'll see, Mr. Tarkman. We'll have to allow the Russians a voice of some kind now, obviously. The Chinese too, probably. Another message coming in from the aliens. They'd be responding to my message this quickly. What was that? One of the alien ships has broken formation and it's coming in hot. Test our defenses. We estimate it will enter the atmosphere over the Pacific Ocean in three minutes. General Covington? Sir? Order our nuclear forces to DEFCON 2. Yes, sir. The alien ship should hit the ocean about 200 miles northeast of Hawaii. Sir, when the time comes, I'll require you to...
authenticate the launch codes. I've been briefed on the procedure, John. Hopefully it won't get that far. They've defied your warning. They may not have understood. We're getting a picture from one of the spy satellites. Let's see it. Tanning palm sat R, 22 degrees. Those aren't warships. I don't know what the hell is. We don't know. We've got a Navy helicopter off a destroyer within a few miles of the landing site. The alien ship should hit the ocean in 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Telemetry from the deep radar satellite. Hit the water at almost Mach 5. I can't imagine. Sir, the alien it. ships have a liquid interior, probably water. Oh my gosh, I just don't understand. Of course, they want the oceans. What are you They're saying? not like us. They're not air breathers. What about their message? They were clearly not underwater. Not underwater? Then that can't be what they look like. What are you saying? The image they sent was fake? The background was digitally altered. What don't they want us to know? You spoke in front of a curtain. What's the difference? Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. No red. It's possible that they need a liquid interior to decelerate, like oxygenated sand. No, no, li listen. They live in water. They want our ocean. They just took out the deep radar satellites. Mr. President, you need to authenticate the launch codes now. Why do they want to destroy our satellites? Because they have to be trying to communicate with us again, sir. No, no. You have to assume they're hostile now. We've got another hotline message coming in, sir. Coast Guard. Coming down. Contact you. Contact you. Contact you. President Halsey, Russia is a sovereign nation and will remain so. I warn you that we will brook no capitulation with conquerors and will consider capitulation over freedom as an act of war. President Yuri Karpov. If we try to make friends with the aliens, we're at war with the Russians. They left no room for doubt. The Chinese and the French are now on full nuclear alert. They've declared they will do everything necessary to ensure their sovereignty. Send a hotline message to the Russian president. We value our freedom as much as they do, but we'll resort to fighting only when absolutely necessary. Mr. President, the launch codes. We may not come to that. These are the actions of invaders. The leaders of the world seem to agree with that. I don't care what the leaders of the world agree The aliens sent us false images of their appearance. Now, why? I want that translation. We may never translate their message. The they destroyed our satellites, and now they've landed a ship at the bottom of the ocean, ignoring your clear warning not we to do so. We don't even know if they understood. If we don't fight now, this thing will be over before it even starts. It doesn't make sense. They could have wiped us out when this not thing started. Not without destroying what they came for. I want to wait for the translation. Mr. President. Yes. Sir. In a few minutes, the Armada will be within just a few hundred miles of the shuttle. They will be vulnerable then, and only then. You're asking me to launch a preemptive... No, sir! They crossed the line! The President's first words were welcome. They may have thought they were invited. What if the preemptive strike fails? Then at least the Russians will know we're with them, and we can fight them off together wherever they land. <laughs> If you try to cut a deal with these aliens, the Russians will see that as capitulation and will launch at us. Don't think they can't or won't do it. I need time. What, what if all they want is a place to live? Ma'am, with all due respect, that's just wishful thinking. Mr. President, we're running out of time. Unless you act right now, I will be forced to resign. He's made his decision, General. Yes, I have. What attack option do you recommend? No. I recommend a submarine launch from Pearl. Simultaneous attack from the shuttle. Do it. Yes, sir. This way, sir. Sir, the numbers on the card you carry with you must match those I have in my hand. the appropriate line. Will you read it aloud, Mr. President? Yes. 
359. 1372. I confirm your identification code. The code word for the attack option you have chosen is dagger. That's all right. Mr. President, you will have to give the order to the shuttle commander personally. He's standing by. President of the United States. It's an honor to speak with you, sir. I wish I didn't have to ask you to do this. I understand, sir. We all do. I'm authorizing you to launch the missile. Code word dagger. We'll do a good job for you, sir. I know you will. We have the alien ships in sight, sir. They're huge from this distance. Arming the missile. Nah. Firm launch from a Trident submarine out of Pearl. Estimated time of contact, 9-0 seconds. Wait a minute, I got a second launch in the Bering Sea. Must be a Russian sub picking up our lead. Uh, oh! Oh! Oh, I can't see! Ah! The shuttle just went off our screen. The shuttle's been knocked SLBN out. SLBN is off the screen. Our bird has been destroyed. Both submarines have been destroyed. The laser picked the missiles right out of the sky. I've got incoming. Two objects leaving the Armada. Estimated time to impact, one minute, 45 seconds. Where? Moscow. Here, Washington. The leaders of the two countries that attacked them. We could try to launch another. No. No, we've done enough. 115 to impact. One minute to impact. Elizabeth. I know. You ran out of choices. The rest of the world will survive. Five seconds to impact. This just came in. It was in English all along. What was? The alien message, sir. 30 seconds. The computers finally filtered out the distortion of a liquid environment. What does it say? It says... Let us be your friends. Fifteen seconds. Ten seconds. To those who would fail to heed their own words, be warned. You never know who's listening. this guy oliver stone's retard brother read my lips there was no conspiracy no friggin way a bunch of jar-headed phallops who pay 800 bucks for a toilet seat could pull that off you're out of here
Trudy, isn't there anyone out there that has something intelligent to say tonight? Your pal Rudy's online too. I guess the answer is no. Hey, loser. How's life on the other side of the galaxy? I told you not to call me that. Mr. Sensitive. You still live in your parents' basement, right? The only time you go out is when your extraterrestrial buddies take you for a joyride. Let me check the dictionary. Yup, there's your picture, right there under loser. <laughs> well, I'd love to chat, but I've got another mental defective on line three. Elton, is it true? You have actual proof that we're surrounded by aliens? Just because you've never seen the thing doesn't mean it is real. I'm shaking, Elden. You got me on the run, boy. Come on, lay your proof on me. I'm a big man. I can take it. They're inside people. Lots of people. Except most of them don't know it. But somehow you do. Let me ask you something. Why is it these space invaders they, they never visit presidents of universities or brain surgeons. How come they always show up at some trailer park to a mook with bad teeth who's got a love thing for a sister? I didn't ask to be infested by an alien. Sure you did. You stopped taking your medication. Do me a favor. Pull over. Let me talk to E.T. I'll straighten you both out. I can feel him under my skin. He's trying to get out. You want to know the truth, Helen? There are no aliens. Not in our little corner of hell. And if there were, the last person they'd want to hang out with is you. A floater in the shallow end of the gene pool. I can't stand you. Me either! Do yourself a favor. Put yourself out of your misery. Your friends will thank me. You've taken an otherwise depressing evening and made it truly dismal. So until tomorrow, unless I get really lucky and die, this is Stan Harbinger. The Harbinger of truth. 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 We gotta talk about tomorrow. Huh? The syndication meeting. Oh yeah, right. We need another station. Tulsa failed, and if we don't have at least 35 Trudy, markets. You're the producer? Produce! Can I help you? I'm Eldon. We've been waiting for you. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. Take it easy. If you can see the light, if you can see the truth. What are you out of your mind? Oh my god. What the unshakable truths, but what happens when its foundation 
begins to crumble. I told you, the guy was already waiting for me. He was covered in gasoline. He said a bunch of stuff that didn't make any sense, and then... And you didn't try to stop him? Try to stop him? There wasn't any time. And then what happened? And then I got out the marshmallows. The guy burnt to death. End of story. Thanks very much, Mr. Harbinger. We'll get back to you. Thanks. When I think about what happened to that poor guy... Poor guy? Trudy, the guy tried to set me on fire. He would have, too, if he had... Hadn't. Look, given the right time, place, circumstances, anyone is capable of imagining anything. What the hell is that supposed to mean? It means... The guy was a deranged nut job. He got what he deserved. Those people have a war to cover. Press are morons. For some sex scandal. All right, what are we going to say to Phil? You know there's going to be a problem. Don't worry about Phil. I'll tell him when there's a problem. Phil, how are you? Gentlemen. Stan, you didn't say anything to those rat bags, did you? What? I'm going to give it away for free? I'm saving it for the show. Yeah, well, we, we should talk about that. Phil, don't make me angry. My listeners are going to expect me to talk about this. Look, I want you to talk about it, but we got to be careful here. The uh, the dead guy. Eldon DeVries. His wife wants to sue everybody. You, us. Letter. It's totally meritless. Do you honestly believe that it was my fault this guy hibachied himself? In a literal sense? In any sense. You're missing the point here. Garriman Broadcasting has spent a great deal of money trying to syndicate your program. We've already lost one potential affiliate due to local advertiser resistance. In Tulsa? So what? We've already got three more stations interested. At Amarillo, Poughkeepsie, Baton Rouge. You hear that? Poughkeepsie. Are you aware of a group called The Believers? Are you aware of a thing called a nose hair trimmer? Yeah, they're one of those idiotic UFO groups that think that the sky is falling and the government is in on it. Everywhere they look, they see aliens. They're cranks, even lower on the food chain than Trekkies. And you have antagonized them a whole lot in the past. Because they live in a dream world. You're acting like these are reasonable people. They're not. All the same, Stan. They're saying that you haven't been entirely truthful about what happened. Have you been truthful with us? With the police? No, I set the guy on fire. How, how could you possibly take these people seriously? Listen to me. They have a good-sized membership, which they say they'll use to protest in every city that you go into. Perfect. Instant publicity. Instant bad publicity. Phil, it's a controversial show. What better than to go wide right in the middle of a controversy? Stan, this is, this is more than a controversy. I mean, a, a man is dead here, and people like these, these believers say that you might have something to do with it. Big picture. We want advertisers with abundant peace of mind and a willingness to spend money. Little picture? Angry nut jobs get stroked a little bit, they go back into their holes. Where's the difficulty? So you want me to stroke him a little? Exactly. And please, apologize to the guy's family. I mean, no mea culpas, just you deeply regret that it happened. Deeply and sincerely. So I guess what I'm saying, people, is that it's tragic, loss of life. It's always unfortunate. And this guy, Eldon, though he was obviously disturbed, I, I do feel, I mean, what I mean is the fact that he died. I'm sorry, but it's not my fault. The man was delusional, and so are all of his whack job, stargazing friends. Klaatu Barada Nikto. Loosely translated, get lives, people. No apology will be forthcoming. 
And if that means kissing my job goodbye, then so be it. I'd rather flip burgers than sit here every night telling people a bunch of stuff I don't believe in. You want sweet talking lies that make you feel better? Then go to your mama's. You want the truth? Then you come to the right place. Tell me that's what we're doing here, people, because I'm starting to lose faith. Marco, speak to me. My station manager, right? Half him, dude. He's a total jerk. Sheila, you agree? You're the harbinger of truth, Dad. They should apologize to you. And we're into commercial. You think you headed us off at the pass, don't you? No, I don't think anything. But I know what I know. Eddie, read my mind. It's from the lady at the bar. Did they make me drink this alone? I wouldn't dream of invading your privacy. You can invade, I won't complain. Enjoy the drink. I insist you invade my privacy. My name's Stan. I know who you are. Caught your show tonight. Left quite a few bodies in your wake. Yeah, well, just giving them what they pay me for. I didn't catch your name. Darcy. Mind if I sit down? Darcy. You a regular listener? Occasional. It's not that often I'm by a radio that time of night. Well, what are you usually doing? Working. Playing. Whatever. But not tonight. No. Tonight I got lucky. Let me put it this way. I come from the um, other side of the other side of the tracks. You know that expression, the meek shall inherit the earth. What it really means is they inherit the dirt. Life is pointless. Heaven's a fantasy. And hell is right here on earth. Doesn't give a person much reason to go on living. I don't know. But that's why you, you have to find the reason. Mm -hmm. From the moment I saw you, I had a, I had a definite reason. Well, what would that be? See how, how good you look with this outfit. Hold it over a chair. And that's supposed to give me a reason to go on? It's the reason you bought me a drink. Actually, no, I, um, I, I just wanted to get to know you better. So now you know me. Apparently, you don't know me. I would never fold my dress over a chair. I'd slip it on a hanger, a wooden one. I could see killing the tree to make that happen. Pay for the drinks while I pop to the ladies. It's in the freezer. So, not that I'm the jealous type, but uh, is this a habit of yours, following strange women out into the street? 
Oh, yeah. A really bad one. So you didn't notice anything unusual about this woman? I mean, besides the bad dye job, crummy lipstick and those shoes? No, nothing. Are you all right? My doctor keeps telling me about too many antacid tablets being bad for me. I'm beginning to think he's right. You know how it is. Guy gets indigestion, and all of a sudden he thinks he's got a tumor growing inside of him. It's conspiracy on a molecular level. You said it, sister. Mm -hmm. And it's insidious. And there's nothing we can do about it. So, this other woman. Clearly, I'm going to have to do something to make you forget about her. What other woman? And I think I've changed my mind about that image I had here. Oh, yeah? You'd look even better with this outfit right here on the floor. That mouth of yours is a dangerous weapon. Tell me about it. So, would you really quit if they forced you to apologize? Where did that come from? I have a confession to make. I'm not actually an occasional listener. <laughs> the ugly truth comes out. You listen all the time? No, no, no. Not when you're on vacation. I don't do best of shows. I prefer it live and in my face. <laughs> I guess it's sort uh, of... Saw it coming. What can I say? You inspired me. Like the way you handled that guy who uh, killed himself. My buddy Elman. Mm -hmm. I could have called in my support, but actions speak so much louder than words. you guys were clear on the apology issue it's not gonna happen oh it's gonna happen all right or else your little stunt yesterday made a bad situation worse and our advertisers are going off their nut they'll get over it not to mention the effect you had on the widow you know we meant what we said if stan's not willing to help us we're gonna have to reevaluate our willingness to help stan you know, jules mason our afternoon guy he could do this kind of thing <laughs> jules sucks i'll tell you what why don't you ask the believers what they'd like stan to say and he could just read it on the air you know, that sounds tempting. You would let those psychos put words in his mouth, wouldn't you? Wally, please, shut up. Trudy, you're brilliant. If it's a soapbox they want, we'd be stupid not to give it to them. I was being sarcastic. A 50,000 watt megaphone. So they can tell the world that we're surrounded by Martians. It'll be like shooting turkeys with a bazooka. You want to drive another one of these schmucks to suicide? Forget it. I'll pull my punches. Whoever the guy is, I'll give him an open mic. I really don't think your listeners are going to go for that. What do you want to bet? That the believers make total fools of themselves by themselves. I mean, we'll ask them about Eldon, what they think really happened. I'm dying to hear their explanation. That way, the radio station's off the hook, our listeners get a good laugh, and maybe finally, we'll have something else to talk about. Hope you know what you're doing. What's the matter? You don't trust me anymore. It's the believers I'm worried about. Stan, your guests are here. Enderman. Listen, I thought they were going to send one guy. Well, two people, twice as much fun. Hey, if I were Babe Ruth, I'd be pouring toward the bleachers. Mr. Harbinger? Yeah. Nice to meet you. I'm Moses Saxon. Oh, yeah. Hi, Moses. I believe you already know my associate, Miss Gibling. How are you, Stan? Stan, talk to me. What's going on? She's a believer. I'm sorry if I deceived you, but time is running out for people on this planet. No wonder you left before I woke up. You two slept together? 
Okay, I don't I don't think we should do this. We have a deal. It's vital that your audience hears us. We're back from commercial in 30 seconds. I say we blow it off. Surely you're not afraid of us, Mr. Harbinger. Don't flatter yourself. Unless, of course, you don't want your audience to know that you yourself saw an alien several nights ago. What are you talking about? We're back in 20. You pride yourself on telling the truth. And yet you know the truth and you refuse to reveal it. Sit down. Trudy, set up their mics. Okay. No uh, editorializing. That's the deal. Hey, it's Stan Harbinger. We're back at you. Uh, before the break, I told you we had a very special guest. Well, I lied. We have two guests. Our first is Moses Saxon. Now, Moses is a mm, creepy-looking guy with bad skin, who I haven't gotten to know yet and don't think I will. His cohort is Darcy... Darcy, what is your last name? Kipling. Kipling. Yeah, well, that's a different story. You see, Darcy and I are old friends. In fact, you could say that we both know what the other looks like, drunk and naked. Don't we, sweetie? Uh, I'll remind you again. Our agreement was... Eat me. Come on, Darcy. Tell my listeners how good I was. You were great. Put a big smile on my face. And you put a big smile on mine. Two big smiles. And before this gets out of hand, I want to say that the believers have no quarrel with you, Mr. Harbinger. We believe in the truth every bit as much as you do. Is that right? <laughs> and the truth is, our planet, Earth, is being colonized by beings from another part of the galaxy. And for the moment, their numbers are too few to guarantee success. So while they wait for more of their kind to arrive, they live covertly inside people like Eldon DeVries. You have an alien slumming inside of you? It is possible, yes. And I'd have no way of knowing. Most aliens' hosts are ordinary people who go about their lives totally unaware of the awful thing living inside of them. But sometimes that control the aliens have, it, it breaks down. We don't know why. And that's what happened to Eldon. He became aware. And he, in turn, tried to make us aware, through you. Which episode of Doctor Who did you steal this from? You saw Eldon DeVries die, Mr. Harbinger. If there was an alien living inside of him, then you saw it vacate Eldon's body. Why won't you tell the truth about it? Maybe because it didn't happen. You've been sensitized to the aliens, to the light frequency in which... The and the fact of the matter is you've seen at least one other alien since Eldon, haven't you? Yeah, you told Miss Kipling yourself that you have seen aliens. That you saw the alien that emerged from Eldon DeVries. I think your listeners deserve to know what you said the other night. I think they deserve to know the truth. The ugly truth about Eldon is he was right. The ugly truth comes out. I think I saw it. It was something. It's a, an alien? Yeah. It's insidious. And there's nothing we can do about it. And there's nothing we can do about it. This tape is completely fabricated. You doctored it. You're saying that it's not your voice? Do tell us the truth. What did you see as Eldon DeVries was dying? Just say it, Mr. Harbinger. Tell the audience what you saw. What the hell were you thinking? For goodness sakes, Bill, the guy set me up. Stan, you attacked the man on the air. Yeah, I should have killed the son of a gun. All right, keep digging, why don't you? Well, look, if you know, if that had been me, you'd right. have been in jail right now. You're lucky he's not pressing charges. Yeah, don't be a jellyfish. So you don't really get it, do you? You just don't get it. Well, get this. It's over, all right? You don't work here anymore. That's what? exactly what they want you to do. That's fine. That's fine. It's over. They win. Phil! Phil, you don't want to do look, this. Fine. It's look, really, look, it's look, not... we're fired, okay? Let me tell you something, there's a trillion people out there who want to be in business with us. Provided you don't kill them first. Come on, champ. I'll go a couple of rounds with you. Go to hell, Jules. You wish you could do what Stan does. I'll keep that in mind when I'm in syndication instead of him. I gotta hand it to you, Darcy. You're a woman of many talents. I wasn't supposed to sleep with you. I did that because I wanted to. The truth is, Stan, I like you. Oh, yeah, well, I like you, too. So what was that? Some kind of bonus? I didn't catch anything from you, did I? You have to believe me. Getting you thrown off the air was not our goal. All we wanted was for you to agree with us, to just tell the damn truth. The truth? 
Like that tape you manufactured? We're at war, Stan. War changes everything. And the truth is you have seen aliens. The woman in the bar. What exactly was so unusual about her? Oh, come on. There could be a thousand other explanations. Tell me about the sounds that you've been hearing then. Most people who report sightings also report hearing the distinctive alien triple heartbeat. Look, give me the right time, place, circumstances. You're going to deny the headaches you've been having? They're terrible, aren't they? And they never go away. It's the light that's doing it to you, Stan. Our human brains don't normally perceive the light frequencies in which the aliens exist, but if you can see the light... You can see the truth. You should see all the evidence we've accumulated. Stan, let us help you before the aliens start screwing with you. They want you to think that you're going crazy. I'm not going crazy! the truth. Do tell us the truth. You saw, you saw an alien emerge from him, didn't you? You're saying that's not your voice? Not your voice? It's the light that's doing it to you, Stan. You can see the light. You can see the truth. It's the believers I'm worried about. Surely you're not afraid of us, Mr. Harbinger. The tape is completely fabricated. They want you to think that you're going crazy. Oh, I didn't see it before. This is garbage these bastards are into. Now mind you, this is exactly what the alien looks like. I mean, the, the skin's not right. And the eyes. Oh my God. Look, I'm not making this up. They want to destroy me. What about Eldon, okay? Was he wearing a mask? You're starting to sound like one of them. Stan, listen. I've been talking to some people, okay? Some of the smaller markets, real rat hole stations with nothing to lose, and they might be willing to give us a shot. Are you interested? Trudy, I think you hit on something. <gasps> I'm so glad to hear you say that. Okay, it's going to take some time, all right? But if we can start with a few of the smaller markets and then platform into maybe a couple of bigger Eldon's ones. Eldon's one of them. He was in on it. They put on a whole show for my benefit, right? Rig it with, with smoke and fire. Yank a body out of the morgue. Don't you see, Trudy? Eldon's alive. I bet my life on it. He's alive, and I'm going to prove it. As far as I'm concerned, that Stan Harbinger is the scum of the earth. I don't care that he's out of work. That's not going to bring Eldon back. Vindictive Morty. Don't you understand? I'm not suing him for me. I'm suing him for Eldon. <sighs> My head is splitting. I've got to go lie down. that it seemed like 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 it was it sounds right we know they use that spectrum of light for transport and communication I, I didn't give many of it Moses no maybe he found it online Moses I saw something all right 
something I cannot explain, something that is beyond my realm of comprehension. Now, what do you think? I invited you up here because I, I wanted to hang out? Is that really necessary? Yes. It's the only thing that works for my headache. I believe him. Thank you. <clears throat> we'll put a watch on the house. A, a watch? People need to know about this. For the moment, I prefer that we not tip them off. But there is an alien living in that house, having light wave conversations with, with some kind of starship. Will you listen to me? I gotta go. Wait a minute. That's it? Look, I believe you. I want to help. We would prefer that you didn't. Stan, when you lost your job, you compromised your usefulness to us. Right now, you're a pariah. A pariah? For everyone's sake, just do as you're told. I don't understand you. I mean, one minute you want me to tell the world we're surrounded by aliens, the next minute you, you want me to shut up about it. There's something else you should know. You're in a lot of danger. The best thing for you to do is to lie low. If you don't, they'll come for you. You're a threat. Any more of a threat than you are? We can't see them. And if they did come for us, they know they'd just be proving us right. Stan, your only hope is to just disappear. Thanks for coming, Trudy. I got an idea. We get as many stations as we can, all right, Trudy? I don't care if there's ten listeners. There's ten more people that's going to hear the truth. For the last couple of days, I... I've seen things, things you wouldn't believe. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I believe them, but they're real. They're real as can be. Uh, I gotta be out there, I gotta make noise about it. You know, it's great to see that spark in you again, but the deal is gone, I, I told him to forget it. No, 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 you've gotta call him back. You'll get their numbers, I, I'll, I'll call him back. It's not what you need right now. You need to get some help. No, 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 Trudy. Trudy. I know I, I, I haven't been kind yeah, of you know, um, giving me back. I got to tell you that I, uh, I went back to Phil and I, and I begged for our jobs back. He said yes? He gave me my job back. I'm producing Jules Mason's new show. You know, as soon as I feel like Phil trusts me again, I'm going to work on him. He'll bring you back. I know that he will. Get out. Stan. No, come on, get out. So I say to the girl, honey, where'd you get the implants? I mean, she had breasts the size of howitzer casings. Bad boob jobs. Let's talk about it, people. Hey, Trudy, what's it like working with a sane person? For those of you not in the know, my producer used to work with Stan Harbinger. Wow, only two weeks off the air, already relegated to the where are they now file. Stan's doing just fine, he'll be back soon. But not on these airwaves. <laughs> wow, looks like we have our first caller. Joe, you have a bad boob job story? Yeah, I got a story for you, Jules. Huh. It's not about your boobs, is it, Joe? Oh, no. Matter of fact, it's about something way more important than that. <laughs> more important than boobs? Well, I guess that would depend on... Where the fate of the universe fits into your scheme of things. Oh, thanks for the call, Joe. I used to be a cynic, but then I saw something. Except when I saw it... I didn't want to accept that my view of the world could be so... wrong. Is that right, Joe? What'd you see? I saw the truth. Aliens are real. They're here. They want our planet and they're gonna take it. Ladies and gentlemen, it seems we have a very special guest on the phone. That is you, Stan, isn't it? The believers were right about Eldon. When he died, the alien that lived inside him, he, he tried to escape. He died anyway. <laughs> and I saw it. Hey, 
I believe you, Stan. You're the harbinger of truth. You wouldn't make up stuff. Look, you stupid moron. I am not some crackpot. <laughs> That's right up there with, I am not a crook. Of course, you're a crackpot, Stan. That's why you're there, and I'm here. I'm warning you, Jules. Jules. Nice to see you too, Phil. Get out of here. Wow, size triple. Can I get a picture of that? Get a picture of this. Please, please, you've got to let me see Stan. The alien died because Alden killed it. He forced it into the light. Our frequency is hard on them, just like their light frequency is hard on us. But they can survive as, as long as they're in a, a human host. I mean, look. Look it up for yourself. Look, uh, Stan, we're trying to understand, but you got to put down the gun. Stan, we're working to get you back on the air. You're going to have to give us some more time. Stop stalling. Communicate through the computer. You don't think maybe you're seeing these aliens because of the booze? I'm seeing it because of Eldon. He showed me the light. And if you can see the light... They're saying if you release one of us, they'll let you broadcast. I want this mic hot now. Or I swear to God, I'll empty the gun and... They're saying they have to speak to you personally. You want these people to die, is that it? Oh, my head. The aliens think it's gonna stop me, but they're wrong. You see, that's the problem. Elton didn't know there was an alien inside him until the very end. I bet you if I went up to his wife right now and told her that there was an alien inside of her, she, she, she'd think I was insane. You are insane. I swear to God, Jesus. Stan, you put us on the airway, or I swear to God, there's going to be bloodshed. Relax, Stan. You win. We're going to put you back on the air. Good, do it! Uh-uh. First, I'm going to tell you the deal, and it's not negotiable. I don't want to hurt you, so I'm going to clear out this building. Then you're going to release the girl. When she's outside and safe, you're back on the air. I'll give you five minutes to say your piece, then you'll put down the gun and walk out of here. Uh, You're a man of your uh, word. Am I right? Then the way I just described it, that's how it's gonna be. I see it. Get that transmitter cranked up. Clear, Stan. You're coming out of every radio here. Good. And I want to talk about the truth. You know the old saying, if you talk to God, it's called prayer. If God talks to you, it's called paranoid schizophrenia. Well, when you think about what the aliens are doing, I, I gotta hand it to them. Their strategy is brilliant. Divide and conquer. Make half the world think aliens do exist. Make the other half think the first half is crazy. You keep playing the ends against the middle while you invade from the rear. Till nobody knows what's what anymore. And the punchline to this great joke is that they get People like me to tell people like you that people like them don't exist. So I'm going to tell you, I have been wrong. We are surrounded. Something's wrong with the signal. It's like we're kicking out at 10 watts. Actually, it's two. That's what the police wanted. Frankly, I hate it that we gave in at all. Son of a bitch. And you wouldn't know it. You hear me, don't you people? You know what I'm saying is true.
Zoom and me. Zoom and me. Zoom and me. I'm on a home. Jules, get out, get out. They're aliens, Jules. Run. Jules, you are surrounded. Run! Yeah, we're aliens, all right. Who isn't? <laughs> Must have hurt like hell. Battle going on between your ears. Shame. <laughs> He was so useful to us. Won't be easy finding another harbinger of truth. May I? No. Get out of here, Jules. Run, Jules. <laughs> Damn. He killed the hostage before we could stop him. Then when he pointed his gun at us. You wanted the truth, Stan? Now you've got it. They're the ones. They did this to Stan. Get that nut out of here. No, listen to me. They're not who you think they are. I'm telling you the truth. Listen to me. I'm telling you the truth. If we mock that which we do not understand, we may learn too late that the penalty for such arrogance is annihilation.